Hey everyone, I finished building my first LCD test cell, so check it out. I built this with two microscope slides that I coated with ITO and then filled with a pneumatic liquid crystal that someone donated to my purpose. So as you can see the quality isn't exactly great, but it is modulating light. For comparison, here's a commercial test cell that I've filled with the same liquid crystals, and as you can see it works a whole lot better and I'll be using this test cell, the commercial one, to help me improve my process. So let me tell you what I learned. So you may have seen this trick using polarizers where if you uh, have the polarizers aligned you get light to pass through them but when they're crossed you don't get any light to transmit through them. However there's an interesting trick if we put another polarizer between the two set at about 45 degrees uh, light passes through again which is an interesting sort of thing that may not seem uh, quite so intuitive. And in a similar vein, if we put a, a piece of plastic between the crossed polarizers, we get uh, a really interesting effect there. And what's happening is the piece of plastic is scrambling the polarization of light, and there's also some wavelength dependent things going on, which is where the colors come from. So early on, uh, some researchers at RCA thought you might be able to build a display with this technique using liquid crystals. And a liquid crystal is a, a complex sounding name for something that's actually fairly straightforward. In fact, a lot of the proteins in your body qualify as liquid crystals. Uh, really all they are is a, a crystalline substance that can flow around like a liquid. So at the microscopic level, a lot of the molecular properties are crystalline but it really does look like a liquid. So here's a vial of some right here. So liquid crystals have a characteristic sort of murky liquid uh, appearance to them and the murkiness comes from the crystalline structure that's distributed throughout the liquid. A liquid crystal substance will turn clear if you heat it high enough and the temperature depends on the substance properties and it will also turn to a full crystal solid if you cool it enough. So this liquid crystal region is actually a kind of a new phase between liquid and solid. So it's long been known that if you put a crystal between polarizers, you can use the crystal's properties to reorient the polarization of light. And a very smart researcher at RCA was thinking you could build a display with this if you could electrically modulate these crystals, these liquid crystals, and position it between the crossed polarizers. So then you could basically have a system that was either cross polarizers without any sort of scrambling between them or we could put if we could turn the scrambler on and off electrically then we would have a display that we could switch on and off um, you know at our choosing electrically so let's say we had some liquid crystal that we could uh, turn on and off with electricity and when it was on it would scramble light polarization and when it was off it wouldn't do anything to it we could build a display uh, with a stack up like this. This is sort of a cross-section view. And if we didn't have any power applied, what would happen is the incoming light would come in and be polarized by the top polarizer and then pass through here. Nothing would happen because this is just glass and our crystal is off. And then it would get stopped at the second polarizer because our polarizers would be crossed like this. And then if the crystal were on, we apply power and the crystal turns on. We'll talk about the methods later. Then the light would come in uh, and get polarized, and then as soon as it hits the liquid crystal layer, it would become random again, and then continue on through the second polarizer, and this time it would make it through because um, some of that scrambled light is now of the correct polarization, and then hit the reflector and then basically have the same thing happen on the way back. And that's exactly what's happening with this stack up here. So as you can see, the plastic is uh, scrambling the light and we're kind of it's kind of okay I mean it's we do have contrast between the, the, the black of the cross polarizers and the sort of multicolored uh, see-through of the scramble setting but this really um, isn't so great I mean this isn't a, a, an awesome looking contrast ratio for a, a display and there's ways that we can make this function quite a lot better one step up would just be to uh, have the liquid crystal simulate a 45 degree polarizer. This way we don't have these weird color effects. Uh, at least the display is now just black and gray instead of black and multicolored. Uh, but we can do uh, something even better. As it turns out, there's two, uh, actually there's a, a number of different kinds of liquid crystal, but the two that are relevant today are called chiral and pneumatic. 
And chiral liquid crystals basically have a corkscrew structure like this. And the pneumatic liquid crystals have uh, like a needle-like structure like this. And when I say structure, this is like the shape of the molecule. So to make the display as efficient as possible, what would really be nice is if we could convert the polarized light in this liquid crystal layer to the other polarization. So basically if we had something that would twist the light from the polarization generated by the first polarizer to the orientation of the second polarizer, that way we would basically have half the light loss here, because if it's random coming in and this is only selecting for one polarization, then we get half out. Uh, then all of that gets twisted into the other orientation and passes straight through here and then the same path goes out. So our display could be almost 50% efficient uh, in the on state, which is pretty good. So early on the LCD researchers really wanted to find a way to get this 90 degree twist to happen in the liquid crystal layer. And they figured out by mixing these two different kinds of liquid crystals together, they could produce a cross between these two that had just the right amount of corkscrewing going on so that it would complete a 90 degree twist in this liquid crystal layer. So the, the, the chiral molecules have a pitch to them, the distance between uh, parts of the corkscrew, and if we mix these together something interesting happens. The molecules interchange structure a bit and we can actually custom tailor the pitch of the chiral molecules by adding more pneumatic molecules. So if we know what the distance is, and we do because we're building this display, we can custom tailor our molecules such that they will complete 90 degrees of twist in the space that we give them. And this is typically on the order of 5 to 10 microns. So what we could do, um, I mean, since we're building the display, we can tailor both. We can, we can change the thickness here, and we can also change the molecular composition such that we get that 90 degree twist. And this is what it looks like. So the cell is half filled, and so up here in the blue region, uh, the uh, molecules are completing that 90 degree twist for us, and here in the dark region you, you can't see through because that's cross polarizers. I, I only got this um, cell half filled with liquid crystals, so this is air on this side and liquid crystal up here. The reason that this is blue and not totally transparent is because I have a mismatch. The uh, pitch of my liquid crystal probably doesn't match this test cell exactly, and so we're getting some wavelength dependent effects here. Also, I want to give a big thanks for the person to the person that donated these things to me. Uh, he gave me two different kinds of liquid crystal to experiment with in a number of these uh, test cells, so thank you, thank you. So now that we have the basic idea, there's a couple of interesting technical challenges that come up. One is how do we keep these two pieces of glass separated by five microns across the entire size of the display? Um, I mean, at the time they didn't have 50-inch television screens, but they you know, did want to make watches or, or, or alarm clocks that were this big, and they want those pieces of glass to be separated by five micron. Um, what you do is you actually just throw a bunch of glass beads down into this area, and then squash the two pieces of glass together and let the glass beads hold them apart at the right distance. Sounds primitive, but that's actually what we do today even. So check it out. I uh, loaded up my microscope with a commercial LCD, and if you focus down into the layer, you know, focus past the dust that's laying on the surface and focus down into the display, you can actually see a whole bunch of beads in there. And just for comparison, here's the tip of a needle. So I didn't do careful measurement, but I would be uh, pretty sure that those beads are on the order of 5 micron. Next, we need to figure out a way to make clear electrodes. So what, what, what happens when we actually put power on the system is we generate an electric field between the two uh, glass plates, and the electric field is what causes these pneumatic needle-like crystals to uh, you know, um, obtain a certain orientation. So normally we have this 90 degree twist going from the chiral molecules, but we can overpower that by putting an electric field on them and pull them into this straight configuration. So the, the chemical composition doesn't change. We have the same blend of chiral and pneumatic molecules, but when we put and apply an electric field, this uh, behavior is sort of discouraged in favor of this because the electric field is uh, putting force onto our system. 
So the way that we make a display is we actually put clear electrodes in the pattern of the thing that we want to show on the display. And then when we set up, when we apply voltage, there's an electric field only between those patterns. So for a seven segment display, you know, you've got your, your elements kind of like this, let's say, and the actual electrodes on the glass are in that very shape so that we only have electric field uh, where underneath those elements. So the development of clear electrodes was also kind of a new thing that had to happen for LCDs to come about. I don't think they had a lot of commercial use before uh, LCDs were possible. And today this is almost always done with indium tin oxide and so you take your piece of glass uh, that I showed in a previous video and we can sputter ITO onto it to make a, a clear conductive layer. There's one other interesting problem. So I talked about this distance being custom tailored for our molecule or vice versa so that there's exactly enough space in here for our molecules to make a 90 degree twist. But who's to say that the uh, molecules will be lined up with our polarizers? I mean it's a 90 degree twist, sure, but maybe it's, you know, from 0 to 90 or maybe it's from 180 to 270 or what. So there's a very uh, primitive way of fixing this problem. All we do is we take our finished pieces of glass and rub them with a cloth in the direction that we want the molecules to take. It sounds really ridiculous, but this is also current technology today. Um, what we do after making our glass with the patterned ITO electrodes on them is we coat it with a very thin polymer, uh, typically just a couple hundred nanometers of polyamide, and then you, you just take the piece of glass and you just rub it with a cloth. I mean, at the factories, they don't pay people to rub it by hand. We have machines with rollers to do it. But the very small micro scratches that you put into the plastic with the cloth will cause the molecules to um, stick in a preferable direction. So, of course, we rub this top one in the direction of this polarizer, and we rub the bottom plate in the direction of this polarizer. And that will sort of help the molecules get that 90 degree twist in our preferred direction so that it works with our polarizer system. In my case, I didn't have an easy way of making a 200 micron, or sorry, 200 nanometer polyamide layer on my glass. So all I did was use uh, some sandpaper, very, very fine sandpaper to put some scratches into it. And I don't think this worked very well. So I'm gonna have to come up with uh, a plastic coating technique. This basic structure is called twisted pneumatic since we're combining elements of chiral molecules and pneumatic molecules. And you might have also heard about other kinds of displays called super twisted pneumatic or other variations. A super twisted pneumatic is um, a system that uses a 270 degree uh, rotation here instead of a 90 degree rotation. And the reason for that is to get um, better grayscale control in matrix displays. So for doing one or two elements, like a, a seven segment display, this system works out just fine. But when you want to do a um, high density computer display, you run into all kinds of additional problems. And then you might need transistors to drive each pixel and a, the, the list of technological improvements goes on and on. Uh, but if you think about how many billion LCDs have been built and how many, many, many billions of dollars have gone into their research, um, it's not too surprising that uh, we've developed these quite, quite extensively. Okay, well I've got my uh, photoresist system finally under control and so I'll be making some patterned ITO and hopefully some better quality LCDs in addition to some other cool stuff. Okay, hope you liked that. See you next time. Bye.